I love Southern Utah, not only because it is so beautiful, but because it is so isolated. There are still canyons here that have never felt a human footprint. I feel safe in this desert, like I can't make any more mistakes out here. At least, not the kind that got me into trouble before. And yet as lonely as this land is, everywhere you find evidence of how it once teemed with people, a people we call the ancient Puebloans. They were farmers and astronomers and gifted architects. Their buildings were so well constructed, they still stand today. And then suddenly, they disappeared. No one really knows what happened to them. Their impossibly high cliff dwellings suggest defensive protection. But protection from what? Animals? People? What were they afraid of? I think a lot about the ancient Puebloans. In fact, one of my recurring fantasies is to live in one of their abandoned cliff dwellings, away from the world, inaccessible, well defended. It just sounds wonderful. But I also happen to know from painful experience, it is a terrible way to stay sober. Now, why should that be? Why is isolation supposed to be so dangerous for people in recovery? Well, it has to do with the way our brains are constructed. You see, we are social creatures and all the things that we do, believe, reason, love, create, build buildings, perform surgery, fly airplanes, require social connectedness. And so it turns out that choice, the kind that really matters, emerges from our sense of community. So far, we've talked about what goes wrong in the lower reward structures of the brain, down in the deep canyons of survival drives and animal emotions. I didn't talk a lot about what goes wrong in the cortex up here in the bumps and grooves. In fact, I deliberately downplayed the cortex because I find what goes wrong here very frightening. In the midst of my addiction, there seem to be three areas of the brain that we know of now that become impaired, that don't work correctly. One of them is over here, the orbitofrontal cortex. This is the part of my brain where I give value to things, to people, to objects, to ideas. And so what goes wrong here may be what's behind the overwhelming value I give to drugs relative to the things that deep down I truly care about. So it turns out that valuation is an important component of volition. And when this goes, I lose the steering mechanism for my decision making. Now, another area of the brain that's important in addiction is over here, the anterior cingulate cortex. This is the part of my brain where I pick up on social cues and guide my behavior accordingly. So one way of thinking about this part of the brain is that this is where I see myself through the eyes of others. And so when this goes, I lose my ability to understand what I look like. My behavior becomes very inflexible, extremely rigid. I can't take into consideration the opinions of other people, and I can't see how my behavior is harming the people around me. Now, there's increasing research that this part of the brain over here, the insular cortex, is also important in addiction. This is the part of my brain where I attach my consciousness to my body, and so it's important in self-awareness. And when this goes, that may be what's behind my intense craving, my inability to see how my thinking is wrong on things, and the fact that I deny parts of my addiction. But it's not only these areas of the cortex that are important, it's the way they communicate that matters. There are pathways of neurons that link one to the other, and together they allow me to make choices that reflect my values and help me live socially. But these are precisely the capacities, volition, valuation, self-awareness, that collapse in the midst of my addiction. Not only is my decision-making horribly impaired, but, and this is the scary part, I lose insight into just how impaired I am. I can't see how my behavior is self-defeating, harms the people that I care about, and violates my deepest values. If I'm to have any hope of recovery, I need the give and take of social interaction. I need other people, and they need me. Mm -hmm.